everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome back to another planty video. My name is Michelle from Luna Leaf and today's video is going to be all about moss poles. Moss poles have been a really fun addition to my plant collection. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the benefits of having moss poles, the different types of moss poles that I use, the pros and cons of each, and how to maintain your moss poles, and how to do a moss pole extension. So let's get into it. Before I take you through all of that, I think we should do a little tour of all of my moss poles. First off, starting off strong with my Monstera Albo. She's always been one of my favorite plants. I've had her for a couple of years now. This started off as a one leaf cutting and now she's almost at the end of her moss poles so if you stick around till the end of the video i'll show you how i do an extension on this beautiful queen next up we have my philodendron varicosum this is a close contender to one of my favorite moss poles um, this is one of her first leaves in my care and these are her newest leaves, so she's definitely sizing up. I had to do an extension on this one, so if you want to go see that, it's on my Instagram and TikTok. And yes, she is gorgeous. I love this plant. Next up, we have my Cebu Blue Pothos. This is one of my first moss bowls. I have really high hopes for this one. I've seen them have these really beautiful thick fenestrations when they are able to climb so I'm hoping for that. She did start to have some small fenestrations and then I did a chop and extend and she did not like that a lot but she's pushing out these really big beautiful leaves so I can't be mad. I really love this plant. I love how blue it is. We've got my Syngonium Albo. I love this plant as well. I love all of my plants, obviously. But these are the first leaves in my care. And this is the newest leaf. You can kind of see that it's starting to have that arrow shape, which is gorgeous. She's always pushing out like half moon leaves. This one right here. So this one was just in my Melsbo cabinet for a really long time. I just kicked her out because she's starting to outgrow it. So I hope that she acclimates to room humidity pretty well, but she's pushing out a new leaf there, so exciting! Next up we have my Monstera Thai Constellation. This one I got as a really small baby plant. These are the first leaves right here. I think it only had two or three leaves. And then now these leaves have really sized up. She's only about a quarter of the way up her moss pole, so that's really exciting. And I'm hoping that she gets a little bit more variegation as she ages, but still beautiful. Next up, we have my Philodendron Glorious. I have really high hopes for this one. I've seen them big and beautiful on moss poles. She didn't really use her moss pole for... The longest time but now that she's figured out that there is a moss pole she's really starting to root inside so excited for that next we have my philodendron majestic i did a moss pole extension on this guy i think a little prematurely i also have really high hopes for this one i've seen some really beautiful philodendron majestics out there so yeah she really needs to be watered Next, we have my Philodendron Splendid. This is the newest leaf right here. She's always had pretty big leaves. I got her as a cutting with a pretty big leaf at the bottom, but I am in love with the new leaves. This one also needs to be extended, so I might try and do that in this video as well. This one isn't on a moss pole right now, but this is my Philodendron Florida Ghost. I want to put her on a moss pole ASAP. She is ready for one, and I've really enjoyed having this plant, so I can't wait to see her growing up a moss pole. 
that's my philodendron mellow she has not really sized up in leaf size at all since being on the moss pole but she's just a really beautiful plant so i'm hoping that she'll just eventually start sizing up um it's a little bit she's been a little bit of a drama queen so <laughs> every new leaf keeps me on my toes this one has a big slit in it I, I don't know but a little bit of a drama queen but we love her this guy is a little funny this is my monstera adinsoni if you follow me on social media you'll already know but when i was making this moss pole i kind of just threw in some leftover moss that i had from propagating some alocasias and i guess there was a little corm stuck in there and it popped out this leaf right here and I was like okay we'll just leave it um, I thought it was just gonna die off I don't really have a lot of luck with alocasias and then it pushed out this leaf right here and it's even bigger and more beautiful so it's just a full-on plant growing inside of a moss pole now I'm not gonna move it I'm gonna see how how far it goes it might just end up taking over the moss pole but this is, it's a Alocasia cuparia, so we'll see. But that's just a little, little tidbit. This is my Philodendron Mykins. Not a lot to say about this guy. I just added it to a moss pole pretty recently. This new leaf is really beautiful though. So I'm hoping to go for a really bushy moss pole for this guy. So I've got a couple strands at the bottom. This is my Epipremnum Albo. This one is really fun. It just started to fenestrate right here. I have to do an extension so bad. It is at the end of the moss pole and is looking for somewhere to climb. So we'll have to do that soon too, but let's see, I'll see if I can get those little fenestrations, those tiny little holes. Next up, we have my Monstera Stangliana. This was sold to me as an Aurea, but I think it might be an Albo. I don't know. This one, I kind of had to start over again. Um, I think I got spider mites and was not happy. So yeah, I don't really have a ton to say about this guy. But it is a beautiful plant. Next, we have a Monstera Adinsoni Indo. This one was actually a import and it came in pretty rough shape. So I kind of had to go into full rehab mode and start over. So it was just a wet stick when it kind of first started out. And it's really pushed out these really thick fenestrations with these really big holes. So I've really enjoyed seeing this guy grow. This one is also a Monstera Adinsoni Indo, but the mint version. This one really stresses me out every time it pushes out a new leaf. This was one of the newer leaves. It's just a half a leaf. And then there's this leaf, which has really big fenestrations, but I don't know. It just looks really funny and stresses me out every time it pushes out a new leaf. But it's got like a really silver tinge to it so it's a beautiful plant it just yeah it's just funny looking all right now that i've shown you all of my moss poles i want to tell you about the benefits of having a moss pole like what even is the point so first off it acts as an insurance policy so if anything were to happen to the roots that are in the pot you have all of these roots that have already been established in your moss pole that you can prop and chop and save your plant if needed. Going off that, it makes propagating a lot easier because it already has an established root system in the moss pole. So when you uh, go to cut your plant, it already has roots. So it'll be easier to transition into a new medium. Another benefit is that it mimics your plant's natural environment. So all of these plants naturally grow up along trees. So by giving them a moss pole, you're allowing the leaf size to substantially grow and for them to live up to their highest potential. There are a couple cons to having moss poles. They are a lot of maintenance. Um, you are essentially watering a whole nother 
extension of the pot. So that means that you have to make sure that your moss pole stays watered or your plant won't dig its roots into it, kind of defeating the purpose of having a moss pole. Another thing is that they do require a lot of space. You have to give them some room to grow and some room for them to increase in leaf sizes. So Now we're going to talk about the different types of moss poles. Um, this one is just a DIY one that I've made myself using garden fencing, just the plastic kind. There are metal options, but I haven't had much luck finding them. And cable ties. So these ones are great because it's cost effective. You can get a whole roll of garden fencing for like $30 and it'll make a ton of moss poles and the cable ties are like next to nothing and they're also customizable you can make them into whatever size and shape you want them to be all right the other type of moss pole that i've really enjoyed using are these d-shaped moss poles i got these ones on amazon they're really awesome because they hold moisture a lot longer you don't have to water as frequently and they're really easy to put together you just put the moss in the middle and then snap it into place and I've found that they're really easy to extend. You just get the same one and then plop it inside of that one and add a bamboo stake on the back. I'll show you when I do this moss pole extension. All right, now let's talk about how to maintain moss poles. The first and most important probably is how to water your moss poles. My favorite way is just to take them into the shower and really give them a good soak. This way you're able to saturate all of the moss and all of the soil, um, spray down all of the foliage, removing any dust, unwanted pests, etc. And just giving your plant the royal spa treatment. Obviously that does require a lot of work. You have to lug your plants to the shower, spray them down, and then lug them all the way back to their original spot. So another great method is just to take a water bottle and cut off the bottom and use it as a funnel. So you just take it, put it in right here, grab some water, and pour it into the moss pole. It will drip all the way down the moss pole into the pot. So you have to make sure that you keep an eye on the pot and remove any excess water if it's in soil. Um, this one is in semi-hydromix, so I don't worry about it as much. This method is really great because you don't have to move your plant, you can just leave it where it is and if you have a couple water bottles you can do multiple at the same time and you can add fertilizer. So I use a liquid fertilizer, so I just add my liquid fertilizer to the watering can and use it as I normally would water the soil. Or since I don't use fertilizer every single watering, I kind of just like to switch in between. Sometimes I bring them into the shower and give them a nice hose down and spray all the foliage and sometimes I'll just use this method for ease and convenience. I just moved all of my moss poles down to our entryway so there is absolutely no natural light. All of these plants are 100% grown from grow lights. Um, both of my grow lights that I use down here are from Barina. I was lucky enough that they sent me two different grow lights to try. So this is the four foot tall tower grow light with the base you can see it's quite large so that one sits on the floor and then i have this one the two foot tall desk grow light that just sits on top of our deep freeze so i'll give you a little look at what it looks like so this is how I just have this one sitting on top of our deep freeze and then this one is just on the floor in front. Now we're going to do two moss pole extensions, one for each type of moss pole that I use. Right, let's do this one first because this one's my favorite plant. I take these into the shower and give them a good soak ahead of time. You don't want it to be super wet, but you also want it to be nice and damp. So these D-shaped moss poles are super easy because they're all the same size. So I just stick it into the top. There is a bamboo stake inside of my previous moss pole. 
doesn't really need to be in there because we are going to add extra support in the back. So just going to, I just hydrated a little bit of moss here. Gonna fill the remaining top and add a little bit in the bottom here as well. Okay. Um, I find that it's easier to water and a little bit more sturdy if you put the new one inside of the old one. So that's just what I'm going to do now. So that it's nice and snug. Okay. I'm going to put it back into its cover pot. And as you can see, it's pretty sturdy as is, but I'm going to add an extra bamboo stake for added support. And then I just add a couple pieces of garden Velcro and attach the moss pole to the garden stake. On the top. All right. All right. For this guy, I'm just going to do a small extension because this is already a kind of choppy DIY um, moss pole. This thing with these DIY ones, they're not 100% sturdy. So I'm just going to add a small extension onto the top just to give it a little extra room to grow. But the more pieces that you have, the less sturdy it is. So it's always good to start out with one of these big ones, even though you might think that there's no way that it's going to be able to grow up. And then just use my cable ties. And just do a little extension. So this will be good for a couple more months. And then I'll have to figure out something else. Okay, now we've got these two extended. All right, and that is how I do my moss pole extensions. As you can tell, 
These ones are a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more reliable. And this one's gonna need another extension pretty soon since we just did a small extension. But they'll be much happier now. All right, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for being here and interacting with all of my content. I appreciate every single one of you. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure to go check out our website at lunaleaf.ca. We've got some really fun new things going on over there. Um, we're going to be at a market, not this weekend, but next. And we've got some new products that are about to drop. So make sure to go check that out. Thanks again. And we'll see you in the next video. But this is my, the, um, philodendron. This is my Monstera Adansoni. <laughs> my little grow light setup. I almost said grow up. <laughs>